Let's talk about binary relations. We use them last class, but we didn't define them. And I hope this is something most of you are familiar with that you should have seen in some way in discrete math. The terminology that's used, like injective, surjective, I think is kind of counterintuitive, and I always get those confused. The actual concepts, I think, are fairly straightforward, but the map to the terminology is kind of complicated. So this is the definition of a binary relation from the book that is sometimes used for discrete math. There's no definition in the book that we're using for this class of a binary relation that starts out assuming we understand what functions are. The, the binary relation is just we've got two sets. We've got one that's called the domain and one that's called the codomain. And we're using codomain. Range is kind of an informal term that's sometimes used to mean something sort of like codomain. And in functions, we talk about ranges. Range has a slightly different meaning, and we're going to try to avoid using range. Some subset of the product of those two sets is the graph of the relation. The product of A and B is every pair that you can make from taking an element of A and an element of B. If it was complete, there would be an edge between every A and every B. That would be the full product graph. What a relation is, is some subset of that. Could be the complete set. That would be connecting every element of A to every element of B. The more interesting relations are some subset. So we can define special types of relations, yeah. So there's no requirement or non-requirement about anything about the elements of the sets. And all we're saying is A is some set of elements, B is some set of elements, there are edges between those. These could be the same. In A, we could have an element 3, and we could have the same, an element 3 in B. But they could also be totally different objects. There's nothing about the relation that says they can't be totally different things. So it could be that all of the things in B are apples and oranges, or they could be sets. There's no requirement that there's anything similar about the two sets. There's nothing necessarily in common or not in common. All we're doing is defining a graph. We have the set A, and we have the set B. The product... A cross B, it's the set of everything we can get, taking one from A and one from B. That would be those six elements. We haven't said anything about what the elements of the sets are. They could be anything. Everything we're talking about sets today, we rarely care what the elements are. The only thing that matters about the set is how many things are in it. But of course, most uses of sets, we actually care what the elements are. But there's nothing about this that, that distinguishes the elements other than B1, B2, and B3 are different. and it's different, you know, if, if there's an edge between A1 and B1, that's a different relation than one that has an edge between A1 and B1, B2 and no edge between A1 and B1. So they are distinct, but there's nothing particular about those elements. The properties that are commonly used to describe relations. The function means for every element of the first set, which is the A set here, the number of edges out of it is either 0 or 1. If we have one element of A that has edges to two elements of B, it's not a function. Is that consistent with the way we think about functions in computing? Yeah, sure, right. Lots of functions we write in code can, for the same input, return different outputs. But they're not really functions. At least they're not mathematical functions if they do that. To be a mathematical function, every time we call it on the same input, it should give the same output. To be a function, it's not allowed to be the case that it maps the same element to different things. And this is good. Like For reasoning about relations, this is a good property to have. Because if we think of applying the relation as a function, in our common use of a function, well, we can apply the function, the re relation to some element of A, and that's always going to give us some element of B. And it's always going to give us the same. Right? If we had two edges out of A in our relation, we couldn't just get an output. We'd need to get a set of things as an output, and we don't want to do that. So a function is useful. Um, a total relation is every element of A has at least one out. So to be a total function means it's defined on every element of A, and there's exactly one B that is the output for every element of A. Yeah. Don't mathematical functions have to map every element in the domain? So, so some people define function to mean a total function, and then would say partial function when they mean one that's not defined on every element of the domain. So this is another case of terminology not always being used consistently. If you assume that definition of function, then the 
less than or equal to one out just means it's a partial function. The terminology I, I prefer would be you have to explicitly say when it's a total function. Function by itself doesn't necessarily mean it's defined on every input. The sort of analogy, if you're thinking about code, and this is a computer science class, so I think it's useful to relate things to code. It's also dangerous, too, and we've hopefully set that up with the differences between code. Many functions that are functional in programs, meaning they always produce the same output for the same input, have exceptions. They might fail on some inputs, like divide by zero is not defined for zero. That would be still a function if we use this terminology, but it's not a total function because there are inputs in the domain, which is all the natural numbers, that it fails on. And then the other two terms, which are, which are the ones that have been used talking about cardinalities of sets, are how many edges are going into each element in the codomain set. To be injective means there's less than or equal to one edge in. So if, if there is an injective total function between two sets A and B, what does that tell us about their cardinalities? Are they the same? So it's a less than or equal to one here. Yeah, B is at least the cardinality of A. B has cardinality greater than or equal to A if there is a total injective function. This gets back to the question of when I say function, if we didn't specify a total function, if there was a function that was injective between A and B, do we know anything about the cardinalities? No, we don't. I'll try to be careful, but sometimes, and I think this is probably true of some of the definitions we've seen, we've used function with the assumption that we're actually talking about a total function, because otherwise it doesn't help us with the cardinalities. And surjective, there's at least one in that tells us that A is at least the size of B, if it's a total function between A and B. Bijective combines all these to end up with one out and one in. So this is a total function that is injective and surjective. If we have all of those properties, we have a bijection, that there's exactly one out edge from each element in B and exactly one in edge to each element A. And that should intuitively tell you they're the same cardinality. So let's make sure we understand those definitions. Which of these properties do we need? So we've got a relation between A and B. And we want to know that the cardinality of A is greater than or equal to the cardinality of B. Which of those properties do we need? Yeah. Total. total, okay. So it definitely needs to be total. If it's not total, what could go wrong? A could be Right. It could be we have all those edges, but we have some elements of A not involved in any edge if it's not total. So it's going to need to be total. What else? Yeah. Okay, good. It needs to be injective. Our goal is to show A is bigger than B. Actually, let, let's go back to the total question. Maybe I'm not so sure about that, right? So, so the relations between A and B, our goal is to show A is bigger than B. So if we have some elements of A with no edges out of them, that's actually okay. Do we need injective? Yeah, we need surjective. We need at least one edge going into every element of B but we could have some with more. And do we need anything else? Is surjective enough? Yeah, we need a function. If we didn't have a function, we could have just one element of A with all of those edges out. Well, it can't actually have two edges out to the same one, but it could have edges out to everyone. So we, we need a function. That's the two things that we would need. So this was the definition from the book, and this was actually the very first definition, and it was there partly to illustrate what definitions are. Does this make sense? So this is defining a term we didn't use yet, at least not on the previous slide. It's defining a one-to-one -one function. It's using S and T as the two sets. For every two elements, X and X prime of S, if those are different, we know F of X, those two are also different. What does this definition assume about function? Yeah, is this assuming it has to be a total function? The one-to-one, -one, as the name, kind of only makes sense if it's a total function. It's not what we would informally think of as the one-to-one -one mapping if it was not a total function. But this doesn't actually explicitly say that. 